Welcome, WSBU 88.3 The Buzz. My name is Owen Murphy. I'm in the music room. You can see we've got all our stuff set up uh, for our, I think, third interview of the semester. And I'm here today with Brooklyn-based post-punk group, uh, Rap House. So if you guys wouldn't mind introducing yourself, go right ahead. Allie. All right. I'm Ali. Um, I play bass, also one of the vocalists for Rap Palace. Yeah, my name is Ro. Um, I play guitar and I also do some vocals on some songs. Nice. So without really further, oh, sorry, say that again? Oh, just saying we're missing Julian as well. He's a okay. third component of Rat Palace. Not here today, but yeah. Julian are. And our <laughs> drummer, Henry. Yes. Nice. So has it always been uh, a four-person group or how did you guys sort of meet in the beginning? How did this all come together? So I met Julian when I was in, we were both in NYU and I was okay. in a studio and he was the head engineer there. Um, because he was doing his masters and I was I worked with him for a while and then uh, we just realized that we had like very similar tastes in music and yeah oh froze up on us okay how he oh. come on started a band and then we met Ali I met Ali through another friend of mine okay um but yeah that's how it kind of started nice that's so cool. So like, sorry, you froze up for just a tiny bit there. Our network's a little bit unstable, but I think I got got the gist of it. So you guys met, had sort of a very similar taste in music and it kind of grew from there. But um, the one question that, you know, we like to ask people as they come in is where did the name originally come from? Where did how did Rat Palace uh, get the name? <laughs> um i'll take this one i mean i think you were there at the inception of the name yeah. but basically we went through a lot of names we had a hard time coming up with the name in the beginning it was definitely like an process mm -hmm. a few weeks mm -hmm. of just like making notes you know hanging out at bars passing yeah. tossing around different names no i i literally but... so like coming up with a name for it i feel like anything for me has been like the hardest part of anything <laughs> like I think making music is much easier than like coming up with a name for anything that I want to do. Yeah, I get that. And I think it's funny because like at the end, we just like were at a bar and like one of our friends, Andrew, who used to live with us, uh, he just like randomly said this name and we we're like, oh, okay. Yeah, and on a meaning. Yes. Oh, there you go. Sorry, our our network blanked out again. I'm I'm so sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's my internet. It could be that too. So it might be. I have I think two bars. So our our music room has been here for a while, and it still hasn't really caught up to to the modern age yet. So, uh, <laughs> we have a little bit of a some issues every once in a while, but that's really cool. So you were talking about when you met, you sort of bonded over over the the shared the shared love of music or the same types of music. Mm -hmm. And when you sent out the press release, you know, we you know, that's the first thing we see and we see oh post punk. But what specifically did you do you listen to or what specifically do you consider your influences to be that you really, you know, take in and, you know, use for your for your music? Um I think so when I met Julian, we were both I mean, I was like um, listening to a lot of like UK bands and stuff, like King Cruel, Shame, I Say. Okay. Okay. Band, like, but Julian and I bonded over like you know like like different music. Like MF Doom was something that yeah, we talked yeah, yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The OCs we played it together a lot, and we were like, oh shit, like you also like this kind of music. So yeah, yeah. Um, no, OCs was great, especially the Shame mention is pretty cool. I was actually. So when we when we listened to the the single for the first time, one of the bands that it really reminded me of um, was Jockstrap. And so, you know, Jockstrap and Shame all sort of fit in that same like windmill, uh, like, you know, the people playing at the windmill, like Black Midi, Black Country, New Road, like all that. I definitely got that sort of vibe from it. That's really cool. But um, what do you think then, uh, like going forward, do you want to sort of stick with this sound? Do you like what you have? How are you are you trying to 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 work towards a different sound? Like what what do you what do you think you're going to either stay the same or evolve into? How are you feeling about that? So I think that this song definitely reflects a very particular sound, but I think something that's kind of cool about our album that's mm -hmm. coming up is I think we experiment with a lot of different sounds. Um, yeah. 
that like we feel like all of our songs could in a way be their own single like there's yeah. a lot of different, like sonic elements that we work mm-hmm. with different like influences kind yeah. of within that, like post-punk world but definitely go in a lot of different directions so I think we kind of are just like a group that likes to try out with different sounds and yeah. like, remain open-minded to different things so I feel like we're already kind of looking forward to writing a second album and seeing where that could go and taking all kinds of yeah. different vibes and different ideas. And- yeah, for sure. And I also feel like some songs represent like me more. Some songs represent Ali more. Mm-hmm. Songs are like, you know, very Julian um, <laughs> sounding. Yeah. So I feel like that's that just kind of naturally happened because uh, even though like me and Julian like the same music when we met and like we talked about it, it's like, I we came to like sort of realize that like he had like a better like liking towards you know like playful like 90s kind of sounding music and I was yeah. more like a more serious tone and like the more like current post-punk bands that bands yeah. that I like so I feel like the album kind of just became a combination of both and it I, I like was definitely worried that like it was going to be like you know very separated from each other and I would be like mm-hmm. very like audible that like some songs would be like obviously <laughs> me or like him, but I feel like it ended up being like something, not like something new because that sounds pretentious, but like yeah, I like you that. can hear like different types of things going on in like kind of every song for sure, yeah. And like you know, songs that you sing have a different tone, like you said before, than like the songs that I'm singing. Like sure. we kind of like split our songs. Like I write the lyrics and vocals for mm-hmm. my song writes the lyrics and vocals for his song so like I think in like the next like double single that comes out too they're both songs that like Rohit's gonna be singing and mm-hmm. it kind of takes that nice. different so yeah that's so cool so uh I did want to ask this so um sort of in preparation obviously you guys sent out the the press release package for Dust Free Home which is the name of the album if I'm remembering correctly right. um and the so like in preparation obviously I listened to that but I wanted to see what else was there and, you know, in doing that, I found uh, your guys' band camp. And the only current release uh, on the band camp was the Rat Palace Live at Pirate, I want to say, is was the name of the venue, right? Um, and I think that's five songs. So from, from where that was, from, where, you know, those songs that you were writing and playing at that time. Um, and another thing, too, for those, you know, watching, they're all untitled. How many of those have you sort of kept with and worked on and are going to, you think, you know, be on the on the album when it fully comes out? Or like, how do you think you've evolved from that first live release? So all of the songs that are on the band camp are going to be on the album that's coming okay. out. There's going to be five additional songs. That yeah. We it's those songs on the band camp. So it's a 10 song LP. Um, they all have titles now. I think we already <laughs> said that coming up with names is hard. And that definitely yeah. reflects yeah song that took months. Process. Yeah, it was like kind of <laughs> last minute. Some of them still didn't have names. We're like, all right. What mm-hmm. are we calling this song? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and I think that since those five songs, I feel like with there, we kind of started experimenting and like going different directions. And I think the additional five songs that are going to be on the album are even a level up from where mm-hmm. we were at those songs. I think we got, a, you know, experimented a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the album sounds very, like very, very different. I feel like I was listening to the Bandcamp recordings the other day um, just to like jog my memory and like, um it just sounds very different from what our album sounds like obviously yeah. because like recorded in like a studio and everything but yeah i just feel like we um just inevitably changed a lot yeah uh, it was also a long time ago um mm-hmm. which i'm also bad about but um i don't think we had an idea of what the album was gonna sound like when we were before we recorded it obviously yeah we ended up so like we mixed julian mixed the album because he's are like he's the engineer of the band Mm. so we had a lot of time to just like do overdubs just add a lot of like extra stuff that we thought was cool a lot of feedback some synths that we didn't even like plan on having synths in the album yeah so okay it worked out really well and you know it's just i just think it's very different from the band camp recordings which i like yeah for sure. Julian, I think with the mixing too, gave it a really like contemporary kind of feel that I think yeah. is cool. Like mm-hmm. I feel like we also experimented a lot with the mix and sure. I think it gave a like new shape for like the mm-hmm. band camp felt very kind of, you know, more kind of classic y rock elements. Yeah. yeah. And gives it a new Yeah, for the song that um, you know, our first single Look My Way, like we added since first of all, and then 
I think Julian was really like leaning towards like a trip hop sound for the beat. Mm-hmm. So we literally like added like a trip hop beat to the verses. <laughs> um That's on so top cool. of our drums. So we didn't remove our drums. We just yeah, kept yeah. So, you have them like in like, parallel, which is really cool. Like that in the album, I think. Yeah, well, that's actually one of the things that like kind of caught our attention because like um, every week we get, you know, CDs, we get vinyl, people send us all sorts of stuff to listen to. And (laughs) for lack of a better word, a lot of it's not very good. (laughs) We'll get some stuff that's just kind of, you know, it doesn't sound good. Occasionally you'll hear something and you're like, this is very clearly recorded, you know, live one take off of like uh, an iPhone mic, which, you know, there is better. There's a there is a quality to that. And sometimes it helps. But you know, not often. So hearing your guys' single, hearing your guys' music, there is definitely a level of professionalism and like uh production behind it that <laughs> was really impressive to hear and to like I don't know, it, it sounded a lot, you know, you try to go into this without any expectations when you hear new music, but there was, you know, a lot better than anything I originally expected, like when I got the email and when I started like listening to the things. It was really cool. But um Kind of going back to that, how you're saying, you know, adding synths, adding uh, the extra drums over the verses. What do you think? So if you, you know, if it's not <laughs> too long of a of a process, what's the how do you guys write your music from like start to finish? Is it lyrics and then music? Is it, uh, you know, music, then lyrics? Is it parallel and you figure out what works? Or how does that work from from like the very beginning to, you know, recording something and being happy with it? Um, Usually. So when we started this band, like I, I think it was like all of our like first experiences and like being in a serious like group of music Mm -hmm. of musicians and like we didn't know how to like approach it um really but like we definitely like started just like sitting in my bedroom together and like just writing (laughs) music yeah so that just like naturally made it so that we usually ended up writing the music first and then the lyrics um and then we would like adjust the song according to like the structure of the the lyrics obviously but um it, the for the this album it was mostly like us writing the music together yeah um like me or ali picking up like a song that we liked and then we like wrote vocals for it um okay yeah. yeah i think so i think kind of just like started as a process of just like jamming seeing how we played together yeah. um getting a feel for like our different styles and then over time like taking things we liked and just like working on certain ideas and fleshing them out into mm-hmm. fuller songs yeah um, there, there's a couple like songs in the album mm-hmm. i think that like i was like sometimes i would just like bring a finished like demo with vocals that i just made on my computer and then i would be like hey we should like do this together and then if they would like it we would just go with it so an example of that is triple tarp mm-hmm. um so that was like that, that, that for that one like i think the vocals came with the the music because i just like okay. did it all yeah um, at the same time that's but really cool other than that it's mostly just music first and then lyrics for sure which we're not like obviously attached to like i feel <laughs> like in the future i am at least working on like focusing on the vocals and lyrics more and like mm-hmm. writing the song like around that um okay. and just seeing how it feels and if it feels any different you know yeah but that's super cool so then when you're because you said you know all most of you i think you said do lyrics you there's not like one specific writer there's not one specific vocalist how do you like try to rectify that in the sense of being a band like do do you have one that's like oh we'll do uh one of your songs then we'll go over to one of your songs like how how does that work out um i think like i guess to give a kind of general answer i think like part of what like really works about us as a group and like why I think we like playing together so much is like I feel like we sort of all feel like a sense of ownership over the songs and even though it's like me and Rohit who will end up doing the vocals like Julian plays a big part in the way the songs are written Mm -hmm. so I think it's kind of a sense of like we mostly have been starting with the music and we'll sort of like you know I'll find one song like it's almost happens naturally like the songs that I feel like pulled toward to be like I think I could write something for that vocally um yeah you know, I'll say, I want to write the vocals for that song. And Rohit says, okay. Or then yeah. <laughs> there's like songs that I'm like, you know, feel like a Rohit song. So yeah. it's like Rohit. Yeah. Vocals, so I feel like we kind of feel it out as we go. Uh, yeah. Where we think our strengths would. Also, shine. like, I guess I'm realizing now, but like, I'm never like worried about like, what song should I take? What song should Ali like, Became a band. <laughs> yeah. And. No matter like what the themes are of the songs that Ali writes or like what I write, I feel like 
it inevitably just like works together. Yeah. Um, the album at least. So that's that hasn't been an issue of like <laughs> figuring out what's like cohesive and what's not. Cohesive. Yeah. Anyway. You don't have too many creative clashes at all. Yeah. We do. I mean. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. You know. Certain things that we don't. There's no drama. But there's definitely times when like we disagree with each other and like uh, it never gets heated, obviously, but um, it can get very like opinionated sometimes. But mm -hmm. I feel like that that happens before you know in the writing process when we're writing together and not in like not when like we're writing lyrics. I feel like we just trust each other with that. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. Um, and I kind of want to move on to or ask you about the the actual like physical recording process because you know with the other bands we've interviewed a lot of it was kind of just bedroom recordings or you know they like you rig a you rig something up in your basement and you kind of go for it but with with dust free home it was recorded like a pretty serious studio right you guys uh mm -hmm. were at spillway sounds which for do those who don't know is you know Pretty cool place. That's where um, uh, Gautier and Kimbra uh, have recorded before. Tune Yards, which is another fantastic band, um, have been. They actually also release some fantastic music. But you guys are the first ones to like really um, like have an actual studio experience. So if you could like elaborate on that, what the how that felt, what the process was, like very. I think it'd be very interesting. For sure. Um, so yeah. So I feel like. A lot of these songs like we had worked on for a long time we really felt good about them and we wanted to give it an opportunity to like do a proper studio recording you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. save our money and like we thought it was <laughs> worthwhile um and yeah. i think it really was. we had a great experience doing it um but actually yeah our drummer lennon who was originally in the band um right. he was going to be moving away so we decided we wanted to find a nice spot that we could do it before he left so he's actually the drummer on that album and then okay. our drummer three is who we're playing with now they're both great um but yeah so we just kind of did some research around on the internet some places nearby and we reached out to this guy Eli Cruz who mm -hmm. he also records at figure eight studio in Brooklyn um okay. originally intended to record there but he messaged back that he has this house that he lives at upstate um where he has kind of like this whole separate quarters that are dedicated to his studio he mm -hmm. has all kinds of like cool equipment all this crazy synths and stuff and you know he yeah. said he does it if we want to come up and stay there like we have a place to stay um he you know likes doing it that way because you kind of get out of the city have that whole experience of being out in nature so we thought that that sounded great so yeah. we also I think that was at the time when we had been playing a lot of shows and like uh we just like really badly needed a vacation as a band <laughs> <laughs> um so we just like really wanted to just go upstate and like record there with him since the opportunity presented itself and it was, it was really fun it was like one of the most fun experiences with the band that I've had that's awesome it was great yeah. it was like a kind of you know being at camp but then we yeah. were album all day <laughs> it was that's a lot of work but it was yeah. it was nice that the windows you could see outside the windows and it was just yeah sure from uh from like beginning to end, how long were you guys up there? We were there for three days. So yeah. definitely oh, wow. ended up being okay. like quick. Um we <laughs> didn't that was something I didn't really realize is how long it takes to mm -hmm. record an album and like, you know, once you do all the setup and all the other the, doing mm -hmm. multiple things of the songs to get it to be something that everyone's happy with. Yeah. Um it takes a long time. So we were a little crammed in, in those days. We ended up doing just instrumentals up there and then the vocals we actually recorded at home. Um Julian okay. has kind of studio set up in his room mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we recorded the vocals in there and then some of the overdubs and the rest of that stuff was yeah. at home so I feel like it ended up being part of like the mixing process taking a while because we really like mm -hmm. rushed to get all the <laughs> instrumental in while we were there yeah um, yeah but I think sense. I'm really happy with how it sounds in the end yeah. like it didn't no like sounded rushed or anything so no not at all like again like I said listening to it definitely sounded like very professional very very high production um, but I do want to go back a little bit. You mentioned you were doing a lot of live shows and obviously you've been playing live for quite a bit. Um, what do you think the local like music culture is like? How do you guys fit into that scene? And like, what's the, what's the sort of ecosystem that you guys fit into there? Um, if you want to take this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's really, we live in Bushwick, um, yeah. in Brooklyn, and there's definitely a big scene, a big DIY scene. Um, there's, you know, basements, venues, rooftop venues. So I feel like 
at first we didn't know a ton of people I think in this Mm -hmm. scene but we moved into this neighborhood and we started to Mm -hmm. hear music and then I think over time just kind of getting to know people getting in touch with different venues um Rohit and Julian also went to NYU or I went to NYU as well but I didn't study music um but I feel like there's a lot of people from NYU who live here and are in Bushwick particularly kind of making music so it's fun it's funny Bushwick is a funny little community (laughs) yeah it's um, a cool vibe to be a part of Uh, yeah I mean the the biggest thing I feel like was like we started playing shows and then you would just like just meet bands that you actually really like yeah that you and then you just sort of like you know admire them and like appreciate them and like become friends and like you plan a show together and then you just meet more people and like yeah. kind of like a snowball effect I guess but um you know I feel like I'm very happy as to the like what the bands that we play with are and like um I feel like we found ourselves in like an in the right like circle for sure yeah. it feels like yeah it feels like there's a community yeah. and it's like I feel lucky to be a part of like something because it feels like there's a lot of artists and a lot of yeah. like people doing like you know even like magazines and you know artwork mm. and stuff that all kind yeah. of like mm. have created a community so it's cool. yeah for sure yeah it seems like a cool very like DIY very like do-it-yourself kind of vibe and I really like that that sounds really cool um but you're talking about doing like basement and rooftop shows do you guys have like a favorite show that you've done do you have like a favorite gig memory that you want to share <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, i mean there was this venue called chaos computer in mm-hmm. green Point, and it like is closed now because of some i think some issues that they had but um that was our favorite show that was like the perfect venue for like our sound i think it was yeah. like a it was like a small warehouse kind of like Ooh, venue yeah. like um you know DIY like not it's like a secret venue um you can't like find the address online or whatever and um yeah we just had a great crowd and um everyone seemed to have a lot of fun and like it just felt really really good yeah that's super cool but Um, um, some basement shows as well that we've played mm -hmm. um I just feel like that vibe just works really well with us because yeah we like to mosh in those atmospheres (laughs) yeah and that's what I love. That's super cool. Do you think with um like you were saying how sort of things changed in studio? You had it all you you know, add synths, you had more drums, you had different I'm sure there's different takes from how you, you know, started with the song to how it ended. How do you think that translates into playing it live with, you know, the sort of advent of releasing an album and, you know, obviously playing more shows after that? Um I think it's interesting too, like now that there are all these different elements added to the songs, like it's something we've kind of talked about of like, do we want to try to like incorporate some Mm -hmm. of the sounds that are on the um, album recordings? Because right now we really, we could play them live. Like there's definitely ways to play them live, like Mm -hmm. even more of us, but it's not something we've done. So we're like, you know, do we adjust the sound? I think it's also like their songs that sound cool and have their own energy without those additional elements in a live setting. But it's something we're kind of like, looking at and considering but also we like the way it sounds live now um and i think it's kind of cool to have the two versions too like the album version which is a little more like you know um has more going on and then the slightly more stripped back live yeah. feel. yeah mm-hmm. yeah i feel like um for our like for the four of us um there's some parts that we added to our songs for the album that like we just kind of like picked on like naturally like we mm-hmm. just like added to our parts but there's some parts like the synth for example like we can't really like do that unless um someone has like a hand that's free to do that <laughs> yeah so, i feel like that's something we need to think about we have always like joked about having like a miscellaneous guy in our band yeah. that does like all the <laughs> other things besides the instruments but yeah maybe it'll happen someday maybe that's super cool miscellaneous guys <laughs> <laughs> with um so um with look my way it hasn't come out yet on any like platforms um what is your plan for that? i saw that you have a single release party coming up in i believe a week right it's the ninth yeah nice that's super cool so is that the first one they're going to release more singles and then the album or how are you guys planning to do this rollout how is this going to work for you guys so um so we're doing the single on the ninth um it comes out the day of the the single release party slash okay. show yeah that we're doing um so i'm really excited about that we have um like a karaoke cam video that we just mm-hmm. diy 
Um, it's just like us kind of like performing the song. <laughs> DIY is a verb. It is a verb, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited for that. It's really quirky. <laughs> um, but for the other singles that we're gonna put out, like the other, so we have a double single coming up after that in a month mm-hmm. or so, and we have a music video recorded and shot mm-hmm. and directed by actually the person behind Home Scene, um, who okay. does a lot of like um live set recordings and um he's worked with some really great artists for music videos as well so that's really excited cool. for that um so yeah i'm excited for that and then we have the album coming out sometime in april um, okay i haven't announced the date yet so <laughs> that's super cool but uh going back to to the music video what was that experience like like planning it all out recording i'm sure there was a bit of a process behind that so the one that's coming out the video cam thing for look my way that was just kind of a fun idea we had we were just like Mm -hmm. we get a camcorder and like rent a car and go bowling um and then (laughs) see what happens and then kind of none of that footage is really being used in the final shot um of what we did Rohit kind of like you know did some premiere learning and it came out pretty cool but then For the next one, um, Hayden, who's doing it, he's a friend of ours and he's, you know, been building up his kind of home scene video platform. And he's been excited about this song in particular and wanted to do a video. So he had a whole kind of vision for it. Um, it's going to be pretty, we started doing some footage for that yeah. and I think it'll be fun. And then, nice. yeah, we're, we're still in the process of shooting that video, but uh, <laughs> yeah, just kind so of, far, you know. excited. I'm excited for it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just kind of going. <laughs> seeing what comes along the thing with Hayden mm-hmm. kind of came along so um mm-hmm. yeah I feel like a lot of it is like just trusting the person um, yeah and like I've obviously seen his other work which I really admire but um you know yeah. we don't we don't know what it's gonna look like and um we're kind of planning on like doing something like different or crazy or whatever mm-hmm. so I'm excited to see what it <laughs> becomes because we're shooting a lot of stuff for it um Obviously, we've never like actually been or like shot a music video for anything before. So, yes, like, we don't exactly know what to expect, but it's exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is, yeah. No, I will be looking forward to that. Then, very cool. Um, one question I did want to ask, I didn't get a chance to before. I think I got kind of sidetracked. My bad. But um, what is your guys like le- getting into like? learning to play music how do you guys come from musical families did you learn as teenagers or recently and like what were your influences playing and growing up so um i mean i think we all kind of came from different backgrounds musically um growing up i took piano lessons as a kid um i started learning guitar when i was like 10 years old i played guitar most most of my life or for a while my life being not that long um but (laughs) I started playing bass really for this band, but I was also like in band in high school and yeah. I, played I was in marching band for a little bit of time. Um, I was in a band actually when I was in high school, I played guitar for that band. It was like, just like a group of girls from school. We had all kinds of different instruments and stuff and that was fun for a little bit, but then everyone, you know, started graduating. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think just kind of for me always been something I've liked doing yeah. been in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I did actually grow up in a musical environment. My mom and my sister were, um, they were like learning vocals um, in like Hindustani classical music. Mm. Um, I'm, from, I'm from India, that's where I grew up. Um, so I wanted to learn drums when I was a kid, but then my parents forced me to learn tabla, which is like the Indian alternative. Um, it ended up working out really well because I like learned tabla for four years and like it really yeah. gave me an appreciation for like rhythm and like how intricate yeah. it can be. Um, and then I picked up the guitar afterwards when I was 13. Okay. Um, and I've just been playing guitar since then. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as Julian goes, he's been, he's been like, the, he's the most musical person out of all of us, I think. And he's been playing like guitar, piano, everything since he was like a kid. That's so. super cool. Yeah. No, I love hearing like, just what goes into it. Like you're saying, learning learning like rhythm and percussion before learning um, like a stringed instrument is such a cool, like it's a cool pipeline. That I don't think I've heard many people uh, either have or or talk about uh, before, but that's, <laughs> that's a really cool, that's a really cool thing. Um, one 
we're sort of nearing the end here, but one other question I wanted to get to is you said that, so the drums on the album were with your original drummer who has since moved away and you have a new drummer. What was the experience like? Like, obviously, I'm sure losing a friend, losing a musician and having to find someone who can fill that role, but also like fit the feel of the band and who can help, you know, work with you towards whatever is you know coming next. Um, I think that, I don't know, definitely like sad when Lennon moved away yeah. and I feel like it's really good for the band, but I think, um, we've kind of played with like some different drummers here and there, had yeah. like, you know, drummers fill in. And I think like, it's been just great to like meeting different drummers throughout the city. And I feel like it's, I've seen more that like drummers do all really have their own different style, um, mm -hmm. and a different feel. And I think we've played with yeah. some really, really great drummers who like, you know, had a different style that like would have been, you know, maybe not the perfect fit for the band, but like still just like it gave the songs a really cool feel. Yeah, um, for sure. So I feel like when we played with Henry, um, he had like a style of drumming that I think fit the feel for the songs that we were originally envisioning. Um, mm -hmm. and, cool guy I feel like we like you know he fit the vibe of what we were looking for in that sense yeah um, but yeah I feel like we've met a lot of drummers so it's yeah. been cool meeting drummers and seeing everyone's different like takes on the songs and like different styles of playing and we've had like some fun shows playing with sure. some other drummers as well when we had like yeah. And yeah no drummers are definitely a hot commodity <laughs> for sure. yeah no I, I feel that yeah no there have been times <laughs> where we were like you know sailing really smoothly and like playing a lot of shows getting a lot of you know good shows and like um and then so like suddenly like our drummer would be like okay this is it for me you know <laughs> um and that's happened to us like a couple times like so the first oh, drummer we had was before we like met Lennon and that was before we before we played any shows actually so like um after that we it took us took us a while to like find Lennon and we were really happy when we found him um, it just worked really well. He just worked really well with us. Um, and it just felt right. And sure. then when he decided, well, he had to move, um, we also had to take some time and like just find someone who was the right fit. And I feel like we took our time with it. We weren't rushing it uh, per se. We were we had another drummer um that we played a few shows with. Um, and then we found Henry afterwards, who's um great and like, you know, for sure fits our band really well i think yeah oh yeah. on that about tim um he was like our yeah. very first drummer someone rohit and julian knew from nyu he ended up not staying with the band he was like commuting from jersey has yeah. a lot of other drumming stuff going on but also <laughs> but he kind of wrote some of the the drum parts on the pirate recordings um yeah, on so he camp. composed some of those drum parts and he just like had a really cool vision for it and we came to him with a lot of songs that didn't have any drums yet it started <laughs> out just three of us and he like had some cool ideas so yeah. definitely gotta shout him out for this album in general <laughs> yeah, for, for his sure. drum contributions <laughs> that's super cool so uh one final question before we because uh <laughs> we only have i think six minutes left but one final question before you know you plug your stuff and we head out where did the name dust free home come from what was the the sort of uh inspiration behind that i think that name um, so we had like a long list of names that we, mm. you know, narrowed down to like 10 and then narrowed it down more the week after because we wanted to like spend some time away from the names just to like get a <laughs> get to the And I, um, I feel like we really resonated with like, um, like we wanted to have like an image that pops up into your head when you read a name like that. Yeah. And like um, our last few options were like all like, you know, a space related somehow <laughs> I wasn't planned or anything but the other option was like big tacky house or something big tacky house I think yeah <laughs> so, that one's a good one so yeah. we ended up with dust free home because it just felt like um it was suiting the songs more yeah than the others and yeah like architecture palace home. yeah <laughs> um, we definitely don't want any animals in the album name because of Rad <laughs> palace but <laughs> Um, that's free home just like felt really good yeah, yeah. I, really I feel cool. like, um you know that's free home doesn't like mean anything good or bad it's just mm -hmm. i like that it's, yeah. uh, it's like i don't know yeah the uh the the cover too goes pretty well with that it definitely fits that vibe of like not being good or bad but just being its own space kind of removed from anything it's interesting mm -hmm. but uh 
yeah, well, thank you guys so much for joining us. This is this has been a lot of fun. I'm I'm really glad I got to do this. I got the text. is like, do you want to interview Ben? I was like, of course. And then that was before I'd heard anything. Uh, mm-hmm. But you guys, yeah, are absolutely fantastic. Obviously, everyone watching right now, um, go check out or keep an eye out for the single release next week. What platforms is the is the, that going to be on? Everywhere you yeah. stream your music. Spotify. Stream, okay, perfect. Yeah. YouTube. And... <laughs> perfect, perfect. It's gonna be on uh Bandcamp too. For like if people want to support you uh in any way, obviously other than streaming, um will be on Bandcamp. Do you guys have merch you want to plug? Uh what else do you yeah, guys yeah. have? We we have t-shirts, stickers, everything. So you can check it out on our website actually and just let us know when we can like deliver or yeah. like, help, like we'll you know, whatever. Bike up to yeah. Upstate New York. We'll we'll bike to upstate New York. And we'll deliver a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, band camp, band camp Fridays. Yeah. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. For fans, any bands that you like. Come to our shows. Say hi. Yeah, exactly. Are you guys uh still planning on, you know, touring not touring, but like playing shows pretty heavily with the with the album coming out? For sure. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Shows are yeah. fun. <laughs> Dude, nice. Um, and- get out um around leaving new york more too for shows we're yeah. playing a show yeah. in boston next Ooh. weekend following our single release um, nice so we're hoping to have more opportunities to sort of get out around yeah. drive a bit be in a car yeah we have <laughs> definitely some big plans for the summer to do a lot of shows outside of new york and yeah new york. that's fantastic yeah. well we'll keep an eye out for those dates um and yeah so uh this has been i don't think we have a name for this our this series of interviews yet but uh thank you everyone for watching uh watching wsbu's uh artist interview series for now uh been owen murphy and thank you guys so much for being here uh check out rap palace obviously on anything you can um yeah thank you